Hello and welcome. You're watching MuseX, and I'm Megha Sharma. This is a very special telecast that we do on the eve of May 28, when the inauguration of the new Parliament building is going to happen at the hands of Prime Minister Narendra Modi. We are over here at the Raisana Hill. Behind me, you can see the South Block, and just. Perpendicular to me is the new parliament building that has been covered completely by these green aluminum sheets. So the suspense is going to be tomorrow when that massive mega structure of the new parliament building is going to be unveiled. So today I'm here with my panelists in front of my viewers to discuss about the history, the culture and the significance of the parliament building right from the start when 1911 it was the foundation stone that was laid by King George V who had come down to Delhi to 1927 when the old parliament structure was constructed by Edwin Lutens and uh, Herbert Baker and finally after almost a century it is the new parliament building that is indigenous that is going to be inaugurated tomorrow. I start off my telecast with getting an Abhijit Ayer Mitra on, on the show with me. Abhijit, it's good to have you on the telecast with us. It is a momentous occasion for the entire nation. It is a momentous occasion for every single citizen living inside the country or outside. What is your first reaction to this mega launch of events that are going to take place tomorrow? Well, I think my first reaction was pride. You know, first when the beautification happened, uh, you know, so uh, you drive past India Gate and you see the entire vista. And was looking prettier than ever before. And mm -hmm. I've been coming here since I was a little kid, living in Chanakyapuri since 1982. Uh, you know, it was something really special watching the entire renewal. And then I finally saw this building. I've seen it from nearby buildings, from the roofs. But now actually coming past here and looking at it, I, I mean, we can't pan the cameras there. But, yeah. you know, if you look at it, it's something very special. On one hand, it's an extremely impressive building. The first thing you get a view of is those bronze lions on top. Yes. Which, you know, automatically, there's just something it does to you inside. You know, yeah. even if you're not a nationalist, you kind of feel a certain pride. Well, absolutely. And then what happens is, you know, the beauty of this building is it doesn't overshadow the old parliament. They, they exist in beautiful conjunction with each, with other. each other. So it's actually very um, sensitive to its environment kind of a building. Absolutely. Utpal call also on the telecast with me. And sir, uh, what a momentous occasion. And I feel part of the history today. We all are standing over here. We are as close to the new parliament building as we can be. Tomorrow, while the Prime Minister will be inside the premises, he would be inaugurating the building. Every single citizen would be watching, putting on their television screens at 7.30 a.m. where the yagna will happen. There are religious ceremonies that are going to take place. There is going to be the handing over of the scepter. So, so uh, it's, it's the gravity of it can, can be felt by every Indian right now. I am so excited. And with we, whole of nation is excited to have our own, I repeat, our own parliament. Because when this British uh, architecture and British building was built, it was not built for parliament. It was not built to celebrate the Indian democracy. It was built as council house. And it was Viceroy's Lodge, which we call as Rashtrapati Bhavan. These are colonial. Uh, symbols. These are, these are colonial architecture. Although it was Indian money, it was Indian labor, but it was all British and they thought they are going to live in India for ages. But now, tomorrow we will have our own parliament and our beloved prime minister will inaugurate it. He is the leader of the house whole nation knows he is the leader of the majority party and leader of the majority party of parliament is the prime minister of india on my left yeah. side i am seeing these the four bronzes of lines this is dharma parivartana chakra when ashoka the king ashoka built this symbol and we have taken it as the india's symbol and this is on the parliament of the uh, on the roof of indian parliament that means now this parliament work for the dharma and for the good of the people that is my first reaction thank you 
Fair enough. You, you both have touched upon the national symbols. You talk about the lion, we talk about the peacock motives. The entire theme of the Lok Sabha and the Rajya Sabha is based on the peacock theme. We also talk about the banyan tree that has been laid. That is also the national tree of our country. Uh, uh, A.K. Mishra, uh, coming to you. Now, how important do these symbols become? from the time that uh, this was a heritage building that was of uh, a colonial hangover to now everything that is intrinsic to what India and what Indians signify? Uh, Ma'am, one thing is very much important. This is a very proud moment for each and every Bharti. I am not talking about Indian. And this is a proud moment for Bharat, not for India. One historical fact is there, when Britishers shifted there, you can say the capital from Calcutta to Delhi and uh, they built all these structures. When they started to working, working in this building, within 20 to 30 years from entire globe, the British Empire has been vanished. It means it was not lucky for Britishers as well as for India. If you see in last 70 years, whatever the growth should be achieved by India, with all resources, we are having all different kind of the resources and talent we could not achieve. This only one building is such a historical importance it is carrying, you right. say. This is from soil. Our, you can say, our thoughts, our history, each and everything has been put in. Where every Bharti can consider, can connect. Yes, this is our building representing Bharat, not the India. So that's why it is very much important for all Indians, all Bharti, thousand year glory whatever it has been there which which was hidden which was not explored it will be unified each and everything across india at one place right. so this is very pride moment for every bharti you're absolutely right uh, dr amit rai uh, we speak about the architecture we speak about the interiors from the Freemason Society and the symbols that have been utilized in the old parliament building, the old parliament building on the left hand side of my screen. My viewers can't see it, but it's on the left hand side of, of the rice and hill over here while, while, while we start. Uh, how is that juxtaposition to what the new parliament building has been built on? Uh, look, I think that the Prime Prime Minister Narendra Modi Ji is doing what the Prime Minister is doing. वो भारत की प्राचीन संस्कृति सभ्यता और देश के इतिहास को पूरे विश्व के सामने रख रहे हैं अभी फिलहाल भारत की जो नई संसद भवन की बिल्डिंग का कल उद्घाटन होने जा रहा है ये देश के लिए एक सेलिब्रेशन का मौका है उत्सव का मौका है और मैं कहूँगा कि अभी देश के प्रधानमंत्री अपनी सांस्कृतिक यात्रा पर विदेशों में थे वहाँ उन्होंने एक बहुत विशेष बात कही कि भारत जो है लोकतंत्र की जननी है पूरे विश्व के लोकतंत्र का जो जन्म हुआ है भारत से हुआ है वो इस बात पे पिछले एक वर्ष से अपने मन की बात में भी जिक्र कर चुके हैं एक पुस्तक के बारे में उन्होंने जिक्र किया है भारत लोकतंत्र से जननी और मुझे लगता है कि भारत के लोकतंत्र को अगर वो दिखाना चाहते हैं तो इस नई बिल्डिंग के माध्यम से दिखाना चाहते हैं और इतने कम समय में देश के इतिहास संस्कृति सभ्यता और स्थापत्य कला का जो अद्भुत नमूना इस नई बिल्डिंग के अंदर देखने को मिलेगा वो पूरे विश्व के जितने भी डेलीगेट्स आने वाले हैं भारत के जितने भी मेहमान आने वाले हैं उनको लगेगा कि इस बिल्डिंग में आने के बाद कि देश की आत्मा देश का जो सांस्कृतिक अनुभव है वो एक घंटे दो घंटे के अपने इस विजिट के अंदर देखेंगे और इस बिल्डिंग में आ, जैसा मुझे पता चला अभी क्योंकि कल उद्घाटन होने के बाद हम लोग भी इसके अंदर जाएंगे देखेंगे उसको महसूस करेंगे लेकिन जितना मुझे पता चला है आर्किटेक्चर और हिस्टोरिकल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू से इसके अंदर देश के प्रधानमंत्री जी और उनके जितने भी इसके एडवाइज़र रहे हैं उन्होंने बहुत महत्वपूर्ण तरीके से देश के सांस्कृतिक इतिहास को वहाँ संजोया है वहाँ की दीवारों पर जो जैन आगम हैं जो बौद्धिस्ट लिटरेचर है वेद हैं पुराण हैं उनकी सुक्तियाँ जो संस्कृत टेक्स्ट है प्राकृत है और जो प्राचीन भारत की भाषाएं उनमें लिखी गई हैं और वहाँ पर बहुत अत्याधुनिक टेक्निक से उन्होंने इंडियन सिविलाइजेशन को भारत की प्राचीन सभ्यता को इस बिल्डिंग के अंदर मूर्त रूप दिया है तो मुझे लगता है कि पूरे विश्व के सामने देश का एक सांस्कृतिक इतिहास इस बिल्डिंग के माध्यम से सामने आया बिल्कुल बिल्कुल आपने काफ़ी अच्छी तरह इसको इनकेप्सुलेट किया है अभिजीत अमन टू कम बैक टू एन वी टॉक अबाउट द स्ट्रक्चर द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर आई टॉक अबाउट फ्री मेसन सोसाइटी ऑन विच द बेसिस ऑफ द ओल्ड पार्लियामेंट बिल्डिंग वॉज यू नो सर्कल्स इन ट्राई एंगल्स दिस इज स्टीप्ड इन British monarchy. This is steeped in how uh, the British power, the British British Empire has been built, and that was the way that uh, back then King Edward the uh, King George the Fifth had also ordered for building of the entire city of Delhi. 
and that took two decades for these architects to come down over here and build that, build this entire Lutens Delhi is what we call it. Uh, versus, versus there has been a steady process by the current government, whether it was, it was renaming Kingsway to Rajpath to now Kartavipath, uh, erecting the statue of uh, Subhash Chandra Bose on when, when the inauguration of Kartavipath happened, the renaming of several of these iconic roads and iconic streets was also a symbolization of how uh, the cultural ethos of the country needs to be highlighted. Uh, we talk about how it is the new India, the more nationalistic India, the more patriotic India, and that's the essence with which the government took forward this charge. So, you know, it's slightly more nationalism than before, but notice even the old parliament out there mm. is modeled after the Chaucet Yogini temple, uh, you know, which was uh, something fundamentally very, very Indian. Mm. And, you know, it took the British something to go to an obscure temple in the middle of nowhere that is actually an architectural masterpiece and to design the parliament after that. Of course, there was the whole Freemasonry angle sort of superimposed yeah. on it. But there was also continuity. And I think what you're looking at here is, you know, civilizational continuity as well. Because you look at the fundamental style. Sure, there's a Western element to the buildings we see behind us. But at the fundamental level, that red sandstone, you know, the offset balconies and things like that, they're fundamentally done for an Indian summer to, you know, offset the walls from the heat and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So it's also very, very Indian architecture in that sense. Mm. And what you're seeing now is a further continuity. Again, remember, it's a, the new parliament, it's a Gaumukhi structure, it's facing east, which is, the entrance is east, which is uh, very uh, auspicious southeast, yeah. really, yeah. facing the rising sun. As per our Vastu rituals. As per our Vastu. And this new one is, if the old one had slight overtones of Freemasonry, this one has a very clear, that mandala structure, right. uh, keeping it in mind. So you'll see change, continuity, and, you know, adjusting to the mood of the nation as you go forward. I agree with you. Uh, there was an important point picked by my other panelists, who will call a the time could not have been more right for the new parliament building to be inaugurated, keeping in mind that the G20 heads of the states are going to be arriving in India. They are going to be taken through this entire Raisana Hill from the entire Kartavipath that reaches the Rashtrapati Bhavan. So this is, like I said, this is a symbol of pride. This is what we tell to the world and the world is looking inwards towards India at this point of time, being the fifth largest economy touted to be the five trillion dollar GDP growth economy and 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 these aspects matter uh, whole of world is looking towards India and this is most important because earlier uh, I can say when 75 years before when India was independent it was more transfer of power and what we need what our panelist once said it is now Bharat India, that is Bharat. So we have to see it in the context of Bharat. And we have to showcase this entire Bharat to the world. And this is the best time. And I may tell you, I have to take the G20 delegates to different parts of Delhi. I, have, uh, yeah. I am the one of the persons who will take them round. But I may tell you that this is the right time and it was the need of the hour. Ne practical need, all the members of parliament were discussing for two decades that this is a small, uh, uh, we need more space. Because all political parties, they needed their own offices. Every parliament member needed space there. And they were discussing it. And now Modi ji, as usual, he is the person who takes great initiatives. Mm. And this was a great initiative to take the uh, new parliament building. And here is the time. I may add one thing here. Tomorrow is the most auspicious day. It is the Pradurbha of, of Mata Ragini. Ma Mata uh, is the most uh, important, the goddess of Kashmir. And tomorrow is a holiday. It is a, it is a holiday whenever, uh, after every year, it is Mata uh, Raghunyaz Pradurba day. And that is tomorrow. And so it is coinciding with such a wonderful day. And I congratulate whole of nation that this day has been selected for inaugurating uh, the new parliament yes, and it will be so lucky yeah. for whole of nation. Yeah, absolutely. You know, obviously these these very it's a very detailed event. Every single point has been looked after. We talk about the Vastu, we talk about the auspicious day on which this inauguration is going to take place. 
and when we talk about the auspicious moments and the rituals how can we forget about the sengal the scepter and there has been a lot of controversy that the sengal sengal has faced in ak mishra but but we are going to particularly speak about how uh, the seers of various mats from tamil nadu they all have been brought in yesterday at the malai temple in delhi they were all gathered together there was this uh, sort of a dress rehearsal if you could call it that took place and finally the scepter is of all importance where it is going to be taken with all the prayers all the hymns that are going to be sung all the religious activities that are going to take place around it and then placed inside the parliament ma'am it's very nice question really it's very nice question i would like uh, <clears throat> to say in historical manner see all these politician they have created that south is different north is uh, uh, different uh, dravidian culture as well as the aryan culture aryan in, in invasion theory and all these things i would like to explain here that the entire culture of tamil nadu has been introduced and developed by maharshi august if you go to tamil nadu you will find out that who was maharshi august and what was the what was the role of maharshi august in developing modern day culture of tamil nadu more than 7000 institute or gurukul he opened there and basically he belongs to varanasi up to the age of 19 year maharshi august was living in varanasi so jo ye bola jata hai na ki unity in diverse diversity how entire india is connected with each and every one one side is kasi nandi uh, nandi is also there as well as on other side in tamil nadu nandi is having equally importance in the culture of tamil nadu also as well as rest of other state culture also so this is unification of not only you can say the public not only each and every state this building particularly but you can say the soul cultural soul of entire india one statement is there ki anekta mein ekta jo ye log bolte hai na ki diversity in unity how to explain this building is going to explain in beautiful manner yeah. you go each and every state culture is there thought is there ideology is there historical fact is there this is one and what is the moral foundation or ethical foundation of india or indian culture bharti sabhyata ka sang achhadham samvaddhadham samvo manasi jantam matlab sab log ek sath chalo sab log milke chalo aur ek hi disha mein ek hi nirday le kar ke chaliye move in one direction with one thought what this building is showing this this is showing that your state may be different your culture your language may be different but we all are one our basic thought concept it is one one more ideological concept it is reflecting here that <coughs> the basic concept of indian ideology or mythology is that sarve bhavantu sikhna sarve santu niramaya that building the old building was only good for the britishers because of they developed that building just to rule over the indian not for the welfare of the indian just to loot the india indian prosperity this building is for each and every indian for each and every bharti for the prosperity for the judgment for justice for equality yeah. so that's why i will not say wah taj here are some people some politician those who are saying wah taj they are appreciating taj mahal that it is one of the wonderful building across the globe but we should remember that the hands were chopped off when taj mahal was built yeah. hands were chopped off but here whatever the labor has put it whatever the tax payer they have put it their money they are going to enjoy the opening ceremony they are going to get a respect here this is the yeah. difference between ideology and culture okay. and why i am feeling proud this is a proud moment for me yeah, absolutely this, right this, absolutely yeah you make you make you make all the valid points over here dr rai getting you back into the conversation we talk about the scepter and and obviously it's it's an emotional moment for all of all, all of us all and mr mishra got emotional right i think it's it's a moment that that we all cherish we all cherish and If fair enough yes, emotion absolutely emotion for your land yeah. for your and, culture and, and, there is yeah. no and value what, no meaning yeah. of your life absolutely we Not, should not have emotion for pakistan or other we no i I'm, i completely agree land. with you that's why that's why you know to, to hold this telecast over here to to tell the people of the country that the gravity of the situation at this point of time the ethos that we all feel for uh, a parliament building that is a once in a lifetime opportunity for people to witness uh, across across the country across across various continents who who live uh, the indian diaspora that lives but but uh, dr rai uh, we talking about uh, again you know uh, uh, mr mishra spoke about the fact that there have been handicrafts there have been art there has been these peacock motive there have been a number of these workers who have been brought in from several parts of the country for example uh, 
the the weaving of the carpets has been done by by these workers from Gujarat. Uh, there is the sandstone that is brought in from Rajasthan, and 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 there are a lot of pictorial de de depictions that have been put that that amalgamate what India stands for, that amalgamates what states of the country stand for. Uh, isn't it a beautiful juxtaposition of the north and south and the east and west? देखिए मुझे लगता है कि सबसे पहले तो हम लोग सब सौभाग्यशाली हैं कि हम लोगों के समय में देश की अस्मिता के और आज़ादी के प्रतीक भारत के संविधान की आत्मा कहें तो उसके शरीर को संसद कहा जा सकता है तो उस संसद भवन का नवनिर्माण देश के यशस्वी प्रधानमंत्री की दीर्घ दृष्टि से हुआ है आपने बात कही मैं इससे बीच में एक बात ये भी कहूँगा कि जी ट्वेंटी कंट्रीज़ के मेज़बानी अभी फ़िलहाल हम लोग उसके बिल्कुल पहले छोर पे हैं बहुत जल्दी करेंगे तो पूरे विश्व के जितने लीडर्स हैं जितने भी पूरे विश्व को संदर्भित करने वाले जो रिप्रेजेंटेटिव्स हैं इंडिया में आएंगे उससे पहले इस बिल्डिंग का उद्घाटन होना बहुत रेवलेंट है बहुत प्रासंगिक है और इस संसद की नई बिल्डिंग में एक संघोल की बात आ रही है कि जो राजदंड की स्थापना हुई है भारत का प्राचीनतम राजदंड है और प्राचीन प्रणाली इसकी है क्योंकि भारत में जितनी लोकतांत्रिक संस्थाएं हैं चाहे वो देश की संसद हो चाहे वो धार्मिक संस्थाएं हो चाहे वो पंचायत व्यवस्था हो तो लोगों को समझ में पहले नहीं आया जब संघोल की बात आई कि राजदंड कैसे स्थापित होगा तो मैं इसके बारे में अच्छी जानकारी दे सकता हूं क्योंकि पश्चिमी उत्तर प्रदेश के अंदर कुछ ऐसी खाप व्यवस्थाएं हैं कैसी कुछ पंचायत व्यवस्थाएं हैं जहां आज भी चांदी के या गोल्ड के संघोल हैं और जब कोई नया प्रधान या पंचायत का प्रमुख चुना जाता है तो उसको वो दिया जाता है ये भी जो फिलहाल जिस गोल्ड ग्विल्डेड यानी कि वैसे चांदी का बना है गोल्ड का उसके ऊपर फॉइलिंग है वो देश का जब सत्ता का हस्तांतरण ब्रिटिशियंस ने पंडित जवाहरलाल नेहरू जी जो कि प्रथम प्रधानमंत्री थे उनको किया तो उस समय भी ये बात आई कि किस तरह से आप चाहेंगे जब ब्रिटिश गवर्नमेंट ने पंडित जी को कहा तो पंडित जी ने उस समय चक्रवर्ती राजगोपालाचार्य जी से इस बात का समय लेकर के ब्रिटिशियंस गवर्नमेंट के रिप्रेजेंटेटिव्स से कहा कि मुझे समय दीजिए तो राजगोपालाचार्य जी ने कहा कि हाँ देश के आगमों में वेद में ऐसा वर्णन है ऐसी चीज़ें मिलती हैं कि जब सत्ता का हस्तांतरण हो तो हम एक राजदंड स्थापित करें राजदंड की स्थापना है कि लोकतंत्र की स्थापना करना या न्याय की स्थापना करना और राजदंड एक ऐसा दंड है कि जिसके ऊपर कुछ उन्होंने स्क्रिप्ट लिखी है उसके ऊपर तमिल लैंग्वेज भी लिखी है उसके ऊपर चोला साम्राज्य का प्रतीक यानी कि इंडिया की जो रिलीजियस या सांस्कृतिक एक प्रतीक के तौर पे उस पर नंदी यानी कि बुल बनाया गया है बुल जैन धर्म के अंदर भी तीर्थंकर ऋषभ देव का लांछन है और उसी तरह से हिंदू संस्कृति के अंदर भी भगवान शिव की जो सवारी या उनका जो सिंबल माना जाता है वो बुल माना जाता है तो मेरा कहना है कि देश की सांस्कृतिक अवधारणाओं को आज आज़ादी के पिछहत्तर वर्षों के बाद अगर कोई सरकार अगर कोई हमारे देश का नेतृत्व भारत की इस सांस्कृतिक धरोहर को वहाँ पर प्रस्तुत कर रहा है क्योंकि पिछहत्तर वर्षों में ये जो राजदंड है पंडित जवाहरलाल नेहरू जी ने वहीं पे इलाहाबाद म्यूजियम में और वहाँ अपना सारा संग्रह दिया बहुत दिनों तक वो स्टोर रूम के अंदर रखा रहा तो ये बहुत दीर्घ दृष्टि की बात है दूसरा आपने कहा कि इस आर्किटेक्चर में इस बिल्डिंग के अंदर देश का सारा का सारा सांस्कृतिक निचोड़ है यानी कि कहें तो पूरा अगर देश को देखना है देश की आर्किटेक्चर को देखना है देश की आर्ट को देखना है ड्राइंग को देखना है म्यूजिक को देखना है पेंटिंग्स को देखना है तो वो यहाँ देखा जा सकता है तो ये ये टाइम सेलिब्रेशन का है अभी एक जिक्र भी आ रहा था कि जब जॉर्ज पंचम हिंदुस्तान में आए तो तब इसका उद्घाटन हुआ तो उस टाइम तो ब्रिटिशियंस ने देश की जो सांस्कृतिक विरासतें थी उनके साथ खिलवाड़ किया अजंता एलोरा के अंदर तो उनका डिनर किया गया जो गुफाएं हैं और आज भी इस बात का मेरे पास कुछ बुक्स हैं उसमें लिखा है कि उस समय जब अजंता एलोरा के अंदर जॉर्ज पंचम जब यहाँ पे आए थे तब उनका स्वागत किया गया उसके अंदर डिनर किया गया तो उसके अंदर वहाँ जो पेंटिंग्स थी नीचे वाली उनको मिटा दिया गया यानी कि उनका रेस्टोरेशन नहीं किया गया उनको लगा कि वो गंदी है तो हटा दिया गया लेकिन अगर इस तरह की विरासतों को ध्यान दिया जाए और देश के सांस्कृतिक महत्व को इस तरह से देश की जो सरकार है देश का नेतृत्व करने वाले प्रधानमंत्री हैं ला रहे हैं तो पूरे विश्व के लिए एक सेलिब्रेशन का मौका है इंडियंस के लिए भारतीयों के लिए विशेष गौरव का क्षण है अभिजीत यू हर्ड इट फ्रॉम द अदर पैनलिस्ट यू नो इट्स इट्स इम्पॉर्टेंट टू सेलिब्रेट दिस वेरी वंडरफुल मोमेंट वंस इन लाइफ टाइम माइल स्टोन दैट इंडिया हैज अचीव आई कंटिन्यू टू हैव दिस डिस्कशन अबाउट द सेप्टर 
Sengol, uh, there was a lot of controversy and I don't know why and particularly the issues being raised by the, why was the then Prime Minister Pandit Nehru decided to keep it at a museum in Allahabad and called it a walking stick when the significance of the Sengol is, is so much more as has been described by our other panelists as well. Uh, how do you feel that there has been this entire uh, 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 role of building a ceremony within a ceremony to hand over the scepter and put it in the parliament. Why was it that when the scepter was first received by the prime minister of our country, the first prime minister of our country, it was kept in a museum and how, what is the signif, what, what does it signify and how important does it become, how integral does it become to the inauguration of the parliament tomorrow? Right. So remember the concept of a scepter actually is um, uh, slightly scary in that it's used to, it represents the authority of the state mm. in that it's used to clobber down anybody who disagrees with the authority of the state. Mm. That's the origin of it. But you know the thing about Modi is he's a master of symbolism. So you know you were raising the issue that there's a banyan tree planted out there. Banyan tree is the Paramaguru. You know all knowledge is to be gained under the branches of the banyan tree. The lotus is again a symbol of wisdom and knowledge and it's the national flower. The peacock is again, you know, it's the uh, Vahana of Kartikeya, which is the god of war. And you look at the Sengal. The Sengal is the symbol of the Chora Empire, mm. which actually went and conquered Southeast Asia. You know, they, there was their great expedition against the Sri Vijaya Empire and things like that. So when you're looking at a sort of maritime expansion and this focus on India being the Indian Ocean power, to get the scepter idea from a empire that was renowned for maritime projection to a distance that had never been done like that before ever uh, is something you know it, it's the symbols within the symbols within the symbols within the symbols right there's a very deep symbolism happening out here the other part of the single is uh, is you know that uh, let's leave aside the part about Nehru because we still don't know who labeled it a walking stick did mm. he himself label it a mm. walking stick or not but to take something that the Congress kind of rejected as part of its own heritage, which should have celebrated from the south of the country. Uh, you know, it's a, such a lovely act of national integration, bringing it, giving it the prominence. It's also slightly bait, you know, allowing somebody to attack it then. Yeah. Um, and do you really think anybody is going to vote for the fact that you attacked the Sengul? Mm. It's such a, it's, it's a very powerfully emotive issue. And at the same time, attacking it just makes you look very stupid I'm yeah. sorry to say that so yeah. you know it's it's so many things again you know these symbols hidden within the symbols which people don't get you're absolutely talk, uh, right and and talking about symbolism Utpal Kaul there was one instance back in our histories when it was Pandit Nehru who was the Prime Minister of our country and talking about secularism of the nation uh, within the country the democracy that reigns supreme there have been instances that have been cited in the books of history that once at one point of time when the Somnath temple was to be inaugurated Pandit Nehru was uh, disagreeable that uh, the pre president of our country Rajendra Prasad go and inaugurate it talking about how it is secularism that needs to be put at, uh, uh, at, 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 at its pinnacle and, and, and if a president of a country were to go and inaugurate the Somnath temple which is, which is a symbol of Hindu heritage that might look upon as something of, of, of being communalist or, or unsecular. Uh, in contrast when you take a look at the Ram temple where the foundation stone was laid by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, Ram temple symbolizes the faith of millions and millions of Hindus across the globe within our, within our country. Uh, how do you witness uh, this amalgamation of all faiths coming together and the parliament building, but also the symbolism that may have been let go of by the Congress for its desire, its ideology to be quote-unquote secular versus what is secular in today's date and age in our country? Uh, first of all, uh, I want to suggest or advise all opposition leaders, please go and read history. They have no idea of Indian history. They have not read ancient Indian history. And I think those who have read ancient Indian history seriously, they understand what is the meaning of Raj Dhand, Dharam Dhand. It was tradition in every state or every kingdom. It was basically Guru was, Raja Guru was handing over uh, to pr 
to tell him that you have to deliver justice hmm. but with authority hmm. because a weak person cannot rule you have but justice should be done and i want to tell these uh, uh, people that india had the democracy from grassroots because panchayat system is thousands of years is panchayat system in india and coming up to uh, nehru ji he is my kashmiri elder so i have to talk very respectfully with him and with totally disagreeing what he did all his life problem is that i don't know they had a mindset weak mindset because they thought 700 years muslims have ruled muslims have got pakistan and why still they were subduing they were not freely and frankly talking what is the truth and it was shame when he advised rajendra prasad our respectable president not to go and in, uh, inaugurate uh, somnath temple somnath is the first jyotirling mm. varanasi is second but somnath is the most important jyotirling that is the soul that is the soul of india and telling about secularism it was again shame in 1975 76 during emergency secularism was included in our constitution india hindu is basically secular we say vasudev kutumbakam we see all human beings we we cannot discriminate that is the indian philosophy that is the hindu philosophy that is the uh, bharati sanskriti so tomorrow we are going to see yeah. this bharati sanskriti yes. and in all the its symbols in all its grandeur and, and all its symbols, grand ones, symbols yeah. from jain to from yeah. uh, every uh, thing will be symbolized inside the parliament that will be uh, the fate of india and it will be an absolute spectacle to watch and uh, we all will be gathered there in front of our television screens i'm also right now being joined by vishal gupta he's an architect vishal it's good to have you on the telecast you were talking about we could talk, we're talking about the architecture and the interiors and how important and significant they become in, in a scenario where india is growing india is becoming a superpower india is becoming a power to reckon with across the globe but also how symbolic it does it become for and how important it is for indians and our democracy to have their own standpoint to not borrow a legacy that is british owned versus what is intrinsically indian if you could shed more light into the architecture and how that symbolizes the intrinsic nature of our country so in terms of the architecture how it begins is that previously the building as you mentioned rightly was made by britishers but now with the growth of the country it's been near about 75 years country is growing population is growing and the new ideas where the country is going towards supernatural so where all those thought process along with the technology also is coming so the new building which is being created is not only taking the ancient architecture but also the new technologies which are coming to safe and secure because with this building all the leaders who are going to be over there in the building are going to lead the country so one is the architecture which is as per our ancient things plus the technology also is playing the role because since past few years building sustainable future is the key when building sustainable future is the key to lead the country which is having second population largest population now the first now, now the, first the biggest largest big, population, largest population so across the globe so we need at least the building which is enabling building sustainable future plus the technologies also to safeguard yeah. the leaders you know that was one of the points that had been raised when the foundation stone before the foundation stone was laid there was the idea the inception of the idea that a new parliament building is required there was a lot of opposition to this thought as well but the uh, the government of india went ahead with this and now we have the building uh, that the old parliament building is now dilapidated it is stressed there are not enough people there are not not enough parliamentarians that can be seated in the rajya sabha or the lok sabha and therefore the number of i think the number of the capacity has now been increased to 
almost 1300 in the lok sabha and the rajya sabha correct there have been technological advances that have been made to ensure that all works go carries on smoothly and it is like you said sustainable but at the same time uh, with the technology with the world we we, we don't look like we are uh, behind a century when it comes to our workings when Rightly it comes said. to the, yeah so so uh, if you could shed more light into what all has been done besides the increased capacity besides getting the technology besides setting up the whole whole team of what parliament signifies so what about the about the parliament signifies is first there are lots of international standards what need to be followed as per the sustainable building now all those standards have been followed we know previously sometimes intrusion has been happened in our previous building and to remove that what all technology advancements are there in terms of the authentication in mm. terms of the cyber attacks etc in terms of the security checks enabling our back model role based authentication model all those models have been in place where it is you can say all the international kind of security safety measures first time has been adopted hmm. within this particular building along with the lead certification so that this is a greener building which the future is i completely agree with you and and on that note ak mishra i'm going to going to uh, now delve into into the you know we we are in the latter half of the one hour discussion that we are having with regard to the history the architecture and the cultural significance of the building there's also been a lot of questions that have been raised by critics by opposition why they want to boycott this building uh, uh, the 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 emphasis on the protocols whether they have been followed or not followed as a common man as somebody who's watching all of this on television screens or reading in your newspapers or, or scrolling through your mobile phones what is the first perception the common person has with all this uh, politics playing around the new parliament building actually if we see the ground uh, uh, level report any bharti again i am saying not indian any bharti they are happy they are feeling proud as you are feeling proud i am feeling proud each and every crew member is feeling proud some of the indians are still living in india <laughs> they, they you can say they were trained groomed born and brought brought up by the britishers they may raise the question that this is the problem that is the problem we don't require why you don't require you require you require only wahtas and so many other things even this plan this design as well as the concept it was planned by the congress government few year back even they are opposing right now what are the basic reason why they are opposing because of this great work has been done by a different government if congress government was there they are going to build up uh, build up this building then they will be uh, welcoming uh, this building so these these are very you can say the very much narrow minded type of the thinking it is there progress right. should be there new development see so many express way highway are going to be developed by the india indian government not by the bjp government or nitin gadkari ji so they will also uh, whether they are having the daring to boycott all those express way that we we are not going to use that express way fair enough fair enough that that's a valid point that's a valid argument uh, uh, getting back to dr rai what what ak mishra has said and again coming back to the controversy should we i mean how is there is there a way or was there a way now perhaps we don't have enough time it's just less than 12 hours till the inaugural of the of the parliament building but could there have been an outreach from the government of india itself the leaders like jp nadda or amit shah reaching out to these opposition leaders and and requesting them and appealing to them that let go of your uh, political differences and come together in unity as uh, one large structure one part of this massive huge greatest largest democracy and 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 unite for a day for for the cause of india for the cause of indians dekhiye bahut mahatvapurn sawal laake khada ho gaya hai kyunki desh ki asmita ki aur sanskritik virasat ki is mahantam jo rachna ki gayi hai desh ki sarkar ke dwara उसका विरोध करना तो मुझे लगता है कि देश के लोकतंत्र का विरोध करना है और जितने भी अपोजिशन के लीडर्स हैं वो मुझे लगता है कि विशुद्ध राजनीति कर रहे हैं इसके अंदर 100 परसेंट राजनीति है कहीं से भी कोई मुद्दा कहीं से कोई तर्क उनका नहीं है आजकल क्योंकि आपने अभी कॉमन मैन की बात करी कि जो जनरल इंडियंस हैं भारतीय हैं वो इस बारे में क्या सोचते हैं या अपोजिशन के जो लीडर्स हैं उनको जो अभी फिलहाल सत्ता पक्ष के जो हमारे नेता हैं उन्होंने रिक्वेस्ट की है कि वो इस बिल्डिंग के उद्घाटन में शामिल हों 
तो मुझे लगता है कि राजनीतिक दृष्टि से तो वो इसमें शामिल नहीं होंगे लेकिन भारत के आम जनता की जो बात है आजकल सोशल मीडिया पे बहुत ज़्यादा चलती है तो मुझे परसों एक मैसेज आया जिसके अंदर एक कटाक्ष था उसमें कहा गया कि आ, क्या जो देश के फ़िलहाल विपक्ष के लोग हैं वो क्या इस तरह का जो वातावरण बना रहे हैं कि हम इसका विरोध करते हैं इसके उद्घाटन में नहीं जाएंगे तो आ, क्या ये भी कह सकते हैं कि आगामी किसी भी बैठक के अंदर इस नई बिल्डिंग के अंदर नहीं जाएंगे तो ये बहुत तो वैसे तो क्योंकि बच्चों ने भेजा मुझे आ, लेकिन बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है कि ये क्यों मजाक क्यों कर रहे हैं okay. इस तरह का मजाक करना देश की अस्मिता या गौरव के प्रतीक के साथ खिलवाड़ करने जैसा है भारत की लोकतांत्रिक आत्मा और उस शरीर के साथ खिलवाड़ करने जैसा है क्योंकि दसवीं कालिक सूत्र में एक बात कही धमो मंगल मुक्किठम अहिंसा संजमो तवो देवा वीतम नमम संति जस धमे सयामनो प्राकृत का ये सूक्त है जिसमें कहा गया कि जहाँ धर्म है जहाँ संयम है तप है त्याग है तपस्या है जहाँ निर्णय है जहाँ पे अस्मिता है जहाँ देश है वहाँ पर उस जगह को उस स्थान को देवता भी प्रणाम करते हैं तो यहाँ देवताओं के प्रणाम की बात नहीं है लेकिन भारत का जो आम जनसाधारण है वो चाहता है कि इस गुलामी के प्रतीक जो प्राचीन यानी कि जो हमारा सौ वर्ष पुराना बना हुआ बिल्डिंग है क्योंकि एक बिल्डिंग की मियाद भी है एक मोन्यूमेंट बन चुका है तो अगर नई बिल्डिंग अत्याधुनिक तरीके से देश के इतिहास को संस्कृति को सामने ला रही है तो उसमें देश के हर नेता क्यों, क्योंकि नेता वो अपनी पार्टी की तो बात कर रहा है लेकिन अपने जो जहाँ का नेतृत्व करता है एक जो लोकसभा का सांसद है कई लाख लोगों का नेतृत्व करता है तो उसके अंदर उसको सब आम जनसाधारण की बात को ध्यान में रखना चाहिए और पार्टियों को सभी को इसमें मैं कहता हूँ कि आम जनता ये चाहती है कि वो इसमें शामिल हों और अपने देश के लोकतंत्र को और अपने संसद को प्रणाम करें Abhijit, the same question to you. Now, this this has been a controversy going on for weeks together. Now, I would also like to mention that right from the start of the inception of the idea, there was opposition that was being shown. Now, then the foundation stone was lowered. It was during COVID time. So, so is this becoming a ploy of the political parties that are opposing the BJP government uh, to watch out? for the 2024 elections that are going to take place and therefore they think that this is going to work in their favor perhaps the common man is going to support them perhaps that's how they are going to build a perception against the government and therefore get the votes or 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 is it actually on the basis of their principles that they are opposing it so you know i think we need to separate the opposition here uh, there is the congress and then there is the rest of the boycotting parties hmm. uh, with the rest of the boycotting parties you know they don't have much experience at the center so i don't think they know what is going to win in the cent in a central election and what is not because each one of them is a regional party that's never really contested outside their little uh, uh, you know their ghetto or, yeah, uh, okay. or whatever it is uh, they're from because remember they're also not pan regional parties yeah. even within uh, the states they represent a certain region a certain community etc etc you only have two national parties really in india one is the congress and one is the bjp So for the Congress again, you know, I find this line of thought quite astounding. How do you think boycotting the opening of Parliament is going to win you votes? I mean, do you honestly think if you go ask ice cream wale bhaiya here or uh, rickshaw wale bhaiya there or pan wale bhaiya nearby, uh, uh, humne boy Parliament opening ko boycott kia? Aap hamare liye vote do. Do you think he's going to vote for you? Mm. If you go tell this to a farmer, do you think he's going to vote for you? Mm. So the Congress's opposition comes from a much deeper, visceral level. You know, they've never been out of power for so long. as to see somebody else build something lasting you know in india's history we've only had three big road builders historically the first was ashoka the second was shesha suri the third was atal bihari vajpayee the problem was that atal bihari vajpayee government only lasted 6 years so you know a lot of the road building then got completed under manmohan singh mm. but today we are at a stretch where we are laying 100 kilometers of road a day that is a phenomenal pace to be doing it at so you know essentially nitin gadkari and modi come off as people in the same line as ashoka shesha suri and atal bihari vajpayee taken to the next level you know mm. on steroids if you want to call it that i don't think that's an appropriate analogy in the indian context but um uh, you know what i mean but and therein lies the problem the congress can't accept that something lasting and permanent associated with the indian state will ever be associated with somebody 
not of the family and not of the party. Okay. And that becomes very problematic for them because they think they have this monopoly on the idea of India. Of course, uh, I don't know if you've read the book An Idea of India. Mm. I couldn't get past the first five pages because even they can't enunciate what exactly the idea of India is. We're just told, you know, uh, in the morning the sun rising is the idea of India, in the evening the sun setting is the uh, 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 idea of India, the sky being blue is the idea of mm. India, the grass being green is the idea of India. There's no clarity on it. So basically, they keep shifting goalposts. And now it's being taken decisively in a sort of the cultural identity of India. Not a time-based, obsolete idea of India based around loyalty to a family and independence struggle that ended 70 years back. That is no longer relevant okay. to this country and is no longer meaningful to its population, which is almost overwhelmingly born after independence. Hmm. Interesting thoughts over there. Uh Utpil call again the same question to you, but also, do you think it's a valid point saying that if the first citizen of the country, President Murmu, should be the one who should be inaugurating the parliament building? What's wrong with that uh, uh, argument that is put forth by the Congress and the other opposition leaders? Uh, let me first uh, tell you that it was the Congress government and Meera Kumar, she was the speaker it was mooted this idea of building new parliament by Congress. Yeah. And even they had made the committee and it was decided that 3,000 uh, crores, not 3,000 crores, crores uh, yes. will be uh, spent on building the new parliament. And luckily it was now Modi ji, it is only 900 to uh, 1,000 crore uh, were uh, used for this new building. Basically, uh, now they say that there was no need. It was Congress. We said that we have to make new parliament. Now they are, I uh, heard the Jairam Ramesh. I think he is a very wise man. But why he is talking like that? He said there was no need of new parliament. Uh, um, old parliament was a beautiful building. But uh, I myself, when I was regularly going to the parliament, and so many parliament members, they were talking that we need place here. And Pani niche utarta tha, is chhat se pani pani aarata. And so they, we really needed a new parliament. Now coming for inauguration, let me tell my uh, other panelists also, if it would be uh, during the time of Jawaharlal Nehru, had he allowed Rajendra Prashad to inaugurate it? And if Idraji would have been there, would, would she have been allowed Bhakruti Daliyapa to inaugurate it? I think it's a bogus. It is, it is, it, it, this uh, question has no relevance. But now and we I, speak of I conjecture. I, I it's I not as if this has happened during Indira's time, this has happened during Raji's and, time. And I think, I think uh, technically, uh, head of the state of Bharat is uh, our president, but leader of the house is Modi ji. He is the prime minister of India. So it is apt. It is the uh, the decision of uh, Modi ji's inauguration is totally okay. eight hundred percent correct. Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, Abhijit. You know, I just want to add to what Kolji said. Just a quick point. You know, show me the protocol document that says the Prime Minister can't open it. Hmm. Does, is there anything in the government uh, rule book or the protocol manuals that say a government building can't be opened by the uh, Prime Minister of India? I, you know, they're just citing, this is like their idea of India, you know, it comes out of thin air, uh, like uh, some Houdini ka magic Perhaps the trick. constitution of our country, when it was written, when it was drafted, did not have the foresight to no, them but, because because you, but you the don't protocol have a rules are dynamic. Have, you don't have the, the parliament building being built being built uh, every ten years or every twenty years. Sure, but the protocol rules are dynamic. They've evolved through uh, this thing. You know, you look at the welcome ceremony that happens here for foreign heads of state. Mm. It's changed over time. You know, the uh, uh, the Republic Day. Uh, you know, the first ceremony was held somewhere in uh, Red Fort. Uh, 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 things happen in different places. Protocol changes over time. This is an issue of protocol. By the way, I find it really ironic that a party that boycotted the president's address to parliament is talking about respecting the office of the president. You know, it's, it, 
कुछ देर आर काउंटर देर आर काउंटर आर्ग्यूमेंट्स दैट हैव बीन पुट फोर्थ बाय द कांग्रेस इज वेल विद रिगार्ड्स टू व्हाई दे डिसाइडेड टू दे टेक्निकली डिड नॉट बॉयकॉट इट बट द फैक्ट दैट दे वर स्ट्रैंडेड इन श्रीनगर बिकॉज़ ऑफ हैवी बिकॉज़ इन इंक्लेमेंट वेदर बिकॉज़ ऑफ हैवी स्नोफॉल दैट दे कुड नॉट अटेंड द प्रेसिडेंट्स एड्रेस बिफोर द बजट सेशन बट बट वी विल कम टू दैट बट वी हैव आल्सो सीन हाउ द डीएमके वी हैव सीन हाउ द डीएमके ट्रीटेड दिस रिप्रेजेंटेटिव इन इंडियन स्टेट गवर्नर रवि ड्यूरिंग हिज एड्रेस टू पार्लियामेंट we have also seen how the tmc treated uh, vice president jagdeep dankar when he was governor of uh, bengal okay. so you know th- this uh, so it, the, the argument goes both ways it goes both okay all right uh, i'm going to again come back to ak mishra ak mishra it's 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 important point that we raise and again uh, it, it does the argument that uh, it should be the president of the country that should inaugurate the parliament does it have enough weightage मैम दिस इज़ टोटली नल एंड वाइट टाइप ऑफ द आर्ग्यूमेंट स्पेशली इन इंडियन कल्चर भारतीय कल्चर प्रजेंस ऑफ वेस्ट विशेज गुड विल उनकी शुभेच्छा उनका आशीर्वाद इट इज़ मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट रेदर दैन द फिजिकल प्रजेंट वन एग्जाम्पल आई एम सेंग ऑल द अपोजिशन लीडर दे आर करसिंग दे आर क्रिटिसाइजिंग फिजिकली दे आर प्रजेंट इन दैट ऑस्पीशियस बिल्डिंग दैट होली बिल्डिंग बट दे आर करसिंग दे आर एब्यूजिंग टू द फ्यूचर ऑफ इंडिया तो हु यू वुड हु इज़ मोर बेटर द प्रजेंस physical presence of any great person big person it is not that much of course that is important but it is not that much important but their best wishes unki shubhekcha unka aashirwad hona hi sabse bada unka presence hai the second important thing <coughs> particularly in current scenario if we, if we see one side especially for the aam aadmi party 45 crore rupees of people they have invested for the decoration of uh, reconstruction decoration interior decoration for their uh, living palace their houses and the same people this 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 building is uh, built up uh, not by funded by uh, bjp or congress or any political pra- party the money of our common people has been invested here they are abusing they are investing uh, they they are abusing to 150 crore people of india agar wo ye bol rahe hain ki we are not going to celebrate we are not going to enjoy or entertain or sit it means they are abusing to 150 crore voter the second important thing let me explain one more minute But they can be sure what they are also saying is that they don't have a problem with celebrating this symbol of democracy in our country. What they have a problem with is that there's no quote and quote protocol being followed. Ma'am, especially in India, if you see in historical manner, say since last thousand of year, when very auspicious thing is there, which is having or showing the value likewise or equivalent to puja, आप किसी भी मंदिर में जाइए. किसी भी ग्रेट मंदिर में जाइए इज़ देयर एनी काइंड ऑफ प्रोटोकॉल एवरी वन इज़ गोइंग वहाँ पे इम्पोर्टेंस भावनाओं की होती है सो ऑल दिस वॉट एवर दे आर सेंग प्रोटोकॉल दिस रूल दैट रेगुलेशन दे जस्ट और दे विलफुली दे आर क्रिएटिंग हर्डल्स ओके फॉर दे आर पोलिटिकल गेन वॉट आई वॉन्टेड टू से दैट एंड वॉट इज द ऑब्जेक्शन इफ प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी इज गोइंग टू एनी बॉडी कैन इन ओग्रेट आई डोंट हैव एनी ऑब्जेक्शन बट द रीजन इज दैट दिस बिल्डिंग इज डेडिकेटेड फॉर हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी करोर ऑफ इंडियन पीपल एंड हु इज द डायरेक्ट रिप्रेजेंटेटिव और इलेक्टिव इलेक्टेड इन इन इलेक्टेड मैनर बाई इलेक्शन दैट ऑल दीज एम पी एंड पी एम मोदी इज ऑल्सो एम पी ओके सो द इलेक्टेड हेड ऑफ द कंट्री हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी करोर इज प्राइम मिनिस्टर प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी बिकॉज ही वन विद द मेजोरिटी ओके क्विकली लास्ट वर्ड फ्रॉम डॉक्टर अमित राय बिफोर आई रैपअप दिस डिस्कशन ऑल्सो देर हैज बीन अ स्ट्रॉग ऑपोजिशन आर्ग्यूमेंट पुटिंग फोर्थ दैट had it been the president of our country Draupadi Murmu who was present on the occasion tomorrow for the inauguration uh, the spotlight would move from Prime Minister Narendra Modi and it is going to go to Draupadi Murmu and that is what प्राइम मिनिस्टर अलेजेडली डिड नॉट वॉन्ट देखिए मुझे लगता है कि ये सब बातें बचकाना हरकतों जैसी है जैसे बच्चे हरकत करते हैं क्योंकि देश की जो कैबिनेट है वो पूरे देश की आम जनता के द्वारा चुनी गई है वो रिप्रेजेंटेटिव है इंडिया की आम जनता के और देश के प्रधानमंत्री आम जनता की अस्मिता के या यूँ कहूँ कि एकमात्र रिप्रेजेंटेटिव है पूरे विश्व के सामने और देश की प्रधानमंत्री के साथ साथ देश की जो अस्मिता की प्रतीक हैं राष्ट्रपति जी भी हैं लेकिन जो देश की कैबिनेट है उनका निर्णय मुझे लगता है कि सबसे आखिरी है और देश की आम जनता ने जो विपक्ष की पार्टियां हैं उसमें मेनली कांग्रेस कहा जाए अगर तो उनको भी सत्तर एक साल का समय दिया है देश पर शासन करने का देश का देश पर राज करने का लेकिन जो पिछली गवर्नमेंट्स ने 
बहुत सारे उद्घाटन किए हैं क्योंकि मीडिया से जो चीज़ें छन छन के आती हैं पता चलता है कि बहुत सारी विधानसभाओं का जो इनोग्रेशन किया गया लोकार्पण किया गया उस समय विपक्षी पार्टियों की जो पार्टी की अध्यक्षा थी वो किसी संवैधानिक पोस्ट पे नहीं थी तो मुझे लगता है कि अगर उनसे करा लिया गया है तो देश के प्रधानमंत्री जो पूरे विश्व को देश की सांस्कृतिक धरोहर की पहचान दे रहे हैं देश का नेतृत्व कर रहे हैं वो अगर करते हैं तो इसमें विपक्षी पार्टियों का कोई रोल नहीं है Okay. अगर विपक्षी पार्टियों का रोल इस तरह से लिया जाए कि किस चीज़ को करना है किसको नहीं करना है हाँ सामंजस्य बनाया जा सकता है लेकिन अगर कोई निर्णय किया जा चुका है तो उसके अंदर विपक्षी पार्टियों को कोई किसी तरह का मुद्दा नहीं बनाना चाहिए क्योंकि वो अपने आप खुद ही हंसी का पात्र पूरे देश के सामने बन रही है उसको पॉलिटिकली okay. उनको कोई फायदा नहीं होगा उससे आम जनता उनसे नाराज होगी ओके ऑन दैट और आई एम आई कम टू द एंड ऑफ दिस टेलीकास्ट थैंक यू ऑल माई पैनलिस्ट फॉर ज्वाइनिंग मी ओवर या एट द राइस ना हिल ऑल इम्पॉर्टेंट ओकेजन टूमोरो सेवन थर्टी एम ऑनवर्ड्स फॉर मोर सच वीडियोज सब्सक्राइब टू द न्यूज एक्स यूट्यूब चैनल हिट द बेल आइकन